everyone, and welcome to Arthritis at Home. It is really a pleasure uh, to see you again today. I'm Cheryl Cohen. I'm with Arthritis Consumer Experts, and we host this program, which comes into your computer every Thursday. Uh, this Thursday, we're super excited uh, to have in the studio with us Dr. Jane Purvis. Dr. Purvis uh, has been with us before. We're always grateful for her time and expertise. Um, just to refresh your memory as an as a audience uh, uh, that may have be returning, um, Dr. Purvis uh, is a uh, esteemed clinician in the field of rheumatology or arthritis. Um, rheumatologists are arthritis specialists. Uh, Dr. Purvis has been a, a leading rheumatologist in Canada uh, for years. I won't say how many, Dr. Purvis, because then I'm dating not just myself, but you. We won't do that. Um, and you currently, you've been the past president of the Ontario Rheumatology Association, and you're currently um, the chair of the Government Affairs Committee, uh, which I know happens to be a very active one. All of your committees are, but at this particular point in time uh, of the year, uh, you're, you've been very, very busy working on behalf of not just your association, but on behalf of patient uh, patients, patient organizations, and in partnership with our organization, and we're going to talk about what you've been up to um, in in the area of biosimilars policy in the province of Ontario. So, welcome to the studio. That gives the audience a bit more information about you and what we're going to chat about. Well, thanks so much for inviting me. Yeah. Um, so, it, it's uh, probably for our audience members, Dr. Purvis, who are in Ontario, they will be well aware of the fact that in March, the Ontario government enacted its biosimilar switching, ACE calls it transitioning, um, policy. And I wonder if you can tell us, I happen to know why the Ontario Rheumatology Association is supportive of the policy and your, your the role you played in making sure the policy was going to serve as best as possible patients and also the rheumatology community. But perhaps you can share with our audience why, uh, we, as we lovingly call it, the ORA, uh, is supportive of the policy. Um, well, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, we were working on this uh, long before biosimilars were known to most groups because we could see them on the horizon. We knew that they were going to be coming. And in fact, they've been out for a much longer time in Europe. So we have been um, studying these drugs to understand their promise. And the basic premise of them is that they work just as well as the innovator biologics, but they are less expensive. So it's a cost savings um, with no loss of efficacy or safety. Um, and I think we can all recognize that money is tight, certainly in healthcare money is tight. And as newer drugs have been coming onto the market that are so expensive, uh, the government is looking to find ways to be able to afford those more expensive newer drugs. And this was something that they wanted to do. And as Cheryl, you're well aware, we walked right up to the edge of this policy in March of 2020, shook hands and said, it's gonna happen. And then the pandemic was declared. So um, the reason that Ontario is so late to the transition game in the country is because the pandemic was there and the government just didn't feel the timing was right until March of 2023 to get the process underway. Yeah, which was smart. I think we all agreed was uh, a very smart move on their part. Um, you know, people who were living with autoimmune uh, types of disease, certainly those of, of the arth in the arthritis family, uh, clearly felt very threatened by the pandemic, justifiably so, at greater risk, at greater risk of hospitalization. So there was so much going on that it made sense um, to push the pause button. Um, as you know, Dr. Purvis, like the Ontario Rheumatology Association and yourself as a clinician practicing in Ontario, we also are very supportive of the policy, um, have been really privileged to be partnering with you and helping provide the patient perspective on the shaping of the policy as you did on the clinical side. Um, tell us, uh, Dr. Purvis, um, you know, we know that the mind is a powerful thing. And having knowledge and thinking positively all helps someone go through any kind of process. And I wonder 
if you can share with us, you know, when it comes to moving sort of from an originator biologic to a biosimilar biologic version of it, what do you do? Like, what do you do as a clinician to ensure that your patients feel, I don't know any other way of putting it, well looked after and experience sort of a smooth switching uh, sort of process? Um, well, that's an excellent question. And one of the things that I can say is that in some ways we're, we're fortunate that we were delayed because we can look to the experience of our sister provinces across the country because BC and Alberta, as well as Quebec, have already gone through this. So large provinces with different but similar um, insurance plans and situations. So we can look to our um, neighbors to find out uh, how things went and they went well. Um, as well, I also look at the European and British experience and see that, you know, it's gone very smoothly over there. Um, when it comes to a patient's experience, the um, biggest thing is that change is always difficult. So, you know, you have to learn the new name of the drug. That's complicated in itself. If you're using a subcutaneous device, the, there's a new device to get your hands on, though chances are it might actually be a little bit easier than the previous one you had. And if it's an intravenous infusion that you've been getting, there's a chance that uh, you may or may not have to change clinics, though lots of times you don't have to. Um, these drugs also, just like the Innovator products, have patient support programs. So you'll still have the support of uh, a group of people to ensure that you get on the product and that any issues are clarified. And if you had any issues, um, whether they be uh, related to deductibles and finances and things like that, or questions about the device itself, you can contact the patient support program, but also your rheumatologist. Right. In addition, pharmacists uh, might have some information, but probably talking to the rheumatologist and the patient support programs would be the places to get your most um, correct information. But I, I, I can only use the fact that the government of Canada very strictly regulates these drugs so that we know that they are biosimilars, not bio better or bio worse. And we also know that the patient support programs are held to standards that they are expected to maintain. But if there's ever any question, reaching out to the rheumatologist and the patient support program is the right way to go. Yeah, and that's the same type of advice um, that, that certainly uh, we would give. It's always um, we try not to burden the rheumatology clinics, uh, but when someone comes in and says, hey, I'm having a hiccup here, actually your offices, uh, Dr. Purvis, usually solve the problem in 10 or 15 seconds or less, um, which is really a phenomenal service provided to, to patients like myself in, in your province. Um, and tell us how you know, you, you obviously are very active in your um, association uh, as past president, as the chair of the government affairs committee. What's the talk amongst your colleagues across the province? The experience has been going well. Um, anything you guys think you could be doing better in terms of meeting the goals? Because this transition process, the switching process has to be complete by December. Right. Yeah. Right. And and Cheryl, you and I know that uh, um, rheumatology leads the way in terms of transitioning, but still only 30 percent of patients. Have yeah. actually been transitioned. So there's going to be a lot of people um, doing something in the next couple of months to transition over to their uh, new biosimilar. Um, I would you know, strongly advocate that the uh, people listening to this, if I haven't got an appointment to see their rheumatologist before the end of December, to do so because um, we're not exactly sure what the government's going to say, but the expectation is that your innovator biologics, uh, there's going to be some pushback on continuing them in January of 2024. So it's easy to switch. It's just a matter of um, picking one and filling in paperwork and then the transition happens. Um, in Ontario, where the government had been the payer uh, and now they're moving to biosimilars, it's actually much easier to access the drug because before you had to submit an application either by fax or through a portal to the exceptional access program. And now all you do is write a prescription and put a special code on it. So, so the, the process itself is quicker than what we used to have to do, or sometimes you ended up waiting 
weeks and weeks to get answers back. Yeah, and so I want to underscore that for our viewers, Dr. Purvis, the process is easier. Um, it, you, From a patient perspective, I can tell you myself, if I can take that script and walk right on into my pharmacy and have that be a seamless uh, process, I'm going to have peace of mind. I'm going to, you know, get that script filled and get on my uh, sort of uh, new plan uh, more efficiently. So I think all of, though we know actually research shows that that peace of mind is beneficial to people. Like they feel comforted. They have confidence that this uh, biosimilar is going to work in the same way and they should see no uh, changes uh, really whatsoever. Um, and if in fact there is an issue, again, the rheumatology office is there, the patient support program is Absolutely. there as well. Um, you know, there's this saying um, that knowledge is power. Uh, I know you've heard it. I'm sure you've used it with your patients many times. Can you um, speak to uh, good information that's available? I mean, I know there's our site, which we thank the ORA for supporting over the years. I know the Canadian Rheumatology Association has good information on its website. Um, but can you speak to the importance of good research-based information, not, not biased, not influenced by one side or the other, but sort of just the facts, ma'am? How does that serve patients? I think uh, the, always the concern would be if you are getting information just from one pharmaceutical company that they may not be taking the full picture into view. So I'd say that by getting unbiased information from a source that looks at all of the drugs that you uh, will be more confident that what you're seeing is, is fulsome and truthful. Um, as I said, the government of Canada very, very heavily regulates these products. So interestingly, even though they're made all over the world, uh, they get inspected by the Canadian inspectors. And as I said earlier, they have to be biosimilar. So they can't be better than the previous drug that they're replacing and they can't be worse. It's very tightly controlled. So if, um, you know, if we feel confident through the way the government was monitoring the innovator molecules, you can feel similarly confident about the, the biosimilars. And we can also look at research that has been done across Europe and the UK, where no difference was seen. And not only just for arthritis, but also for inflammatory bowel disease and psoriasis and any other conditions that have had biosimilars introduced. There's not been um, any difference in either the way that the drug is used in terms of frequency or how it's applied and no changes at all in either side effects or benefits. Yeah, you know, as you know, we're, uh, we are coast to coast, uh, operate uh, in both official languages and have a very large membership, um, Dr. Purvis. And what we've been hearing um, from people is once they have the information and they've had that nice dialogue with you, the rheumatologist, um, people understand, feel comforted, feel feel safe, and they understand the need not to waste healthcare dollars when, in fact, they are in scarce uh, supply um, these days. And I think uh, if you're in our audience and you are in Ontario and you're due to make the switch, uh, you can rest assured that the rheumatology community is there for you. They're eager to, to make the change, to write the script and get you on your way rather than have this big bottleneck at the end, um, which uh, could be problematic, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we want to have everybody going to the rheumatologist on Christmas Eve, realizing that they have to get the paperwork done. Then. Yeah. So I'd say, you know, get in now when you can. Um, and then the other thing that you can also take to heart is that the government has said that they are going to take the savings from the biosimilar transition, which will be you know, a lot. So it's it's not going to be that, like the drugs are half price, but let's say they're a third less expensive than the innovators, but they're going to reinvest that money into healthcare. Right. And you've, you've already seen a positive change. I know you were working on it prior to this policy in action, but you, you've you already seen some positive changes in your own therapeutic area. Can you mention those and how they yeah. how they ultimately help patients? 
So, so we were very happy to see that the government of Ontario decided to start paying for some specific rheumatology blood tests just last week. So now specialists, including pediatrics, can order anti-CCP antibodies, which is a very specific test for rheumatoid arthritis, and another test called ANCA, which is a critical test for um, dealing with uh, systemic vasculitis, which is a very serious and rare condition. Uh, but, but prior to this, patients had to pay if they were in a community setting for these two um, absolutely critical blood tests. And now the government of Ontario has agreed to pay for those uh, going forward. So that's great news for, for patients who didn't want to have to be paying you know, 50 or $100 every time they were going to the lab. Now it will be covered as long as it's ordered by a, a specialist. That's amazing. And, you know, I think we've, we've kind of put that type of uh, benefit under this societal benefit umbrella that in actual fact, uh, Dr. Purvis, this reinvestment you've talked about a couple of times now in our conversation, you can see it in this specific example, you know, coming to life. It, it actually makes a difference. And in rheumatology, um, most patients like me who are out there in arthritis at homeland will know one of the very frustrating things about our disease area, I was diagnosed years and years ago when there weren't any definitive tests um, that actually a positive rheumatoid factor test didn't really mean that I had rheumatoid arthritis. It meant that if I had that and a whole pile of other things going on upon physical examination, I may have rheumatoid arthritis. Um, so news of specific tests that really help you do your job for people like me is amazing. And knowing I don't have to pull my wallet out um, is a great is a great thing. Um, anything else you wanted to mention, Dr. Purvis, before we sign off? I would say the, the most important thing I would just let your audience know is that if you have any questions about biosimilars, um, and your therapies, you speak to your rheumatologist because uh, ultimately um, they are going to have the most information. So your local pharmacist might have some, your family doctor or, or nurse practitioner might have a little bit, um, but if you want to get real information so that you're making concrete decisions, strongly suggest reaching out to your rheumatologist. You are all going to get in Ontario a letter if you haven't been switched yet from the government reminding you that you have until December, I can't remember, the 28th or the 29th, but they really want people to get going on this sooner rather than later, um, just so that there's not a huge rush for the door at the very last minute in December. Thank you so much, Dr. Purvis, for joining us. We appreciate your time very much, and we want to thank our audience, as always, for tuning in. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>